leave it out, all right? I'm on the stage, all right? I'm the star. I mean, you can see that. Look at those trousers. Anyway. <coughs>
right, this is a little instrumental ditty that you can all do the Highland Fling to. Um, I compose this as I'm going along. Um, so I don't know what I'm going to play yet. But it's, uh, it's a tune for hemorrhoid sufferers. You, you got it too? That's called pile driver. <laughs> Same thing goes for this, if you want to be the rhythm section, I can't afford one, you know, so it's up to you, you can sit there very miserably if you like, I don't mind. <laughs> If no one's got any objection, I'd like to take my jacket off. <laughs> oh, that's the co-op used to make wonderful suits. I don't make them like this anymore. Too quick. It's not bad, is it? Oh well, here we go. Um. Yeah, I'd like to play a little song for you now that I wrote when I was coming from Athens. Um, you know where Athens is? Um, it's got all the stone there on this hill. Um, when I was coming back from Athens to Amsterdam because I was destitute and broke and stuff and we had to get the only way back that we could afford was on this on this bus called the magic bus really 
the truth. Honestly, that's what they called it, the magic bus. And I thought, great, it's going to be covered in stars and it's going to have loads of hippies in there and they're all going to be smoking that, that tobacco. And um, it makes a change from my usual herbal mixture. And um, I thought it would be great. And I sort of got there, it was this sort of run-down, shabby old bus that, you know, would, you wouldn't even take to go around the around the block, you know, and we, we spent about five feet in this thing with our sort of knees pressed up against our chest, you know, grinning and singing. I was having a wonderful time, folks. Um, but anyway, it did turn out pretty good after a while, and me and my mate John Parsons wrote this song called The Magic Bus Song. And it's got lots of references to the, to the driver and all the other people who made it such a wonderful trip. Um, I don't think that's all. Oh, right. 
Yeah. I'd like to play a little tune for you now, um, for a change. It was written by Jimmy Reed a while ago. This is called Baby What You Want Me To Do. Each 
chew a little while longer on this thing. Are the now insipid tasting bits of gum? For a while longer, I'm going to flick it back into my mouth, and I flick it back into your mouth, and... Darling, I want to tell you something. You know, sometimes it was hard to know what I was doing! <laughs> got my tremolo arm. I would do. I'm a home in spectacles. Um, let's see, what else can I play? What else can I play? to do <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, well, uh, for my penultimate tune tonight for you, uh, I like to uh, use my special instrument. <coughs> It's, uh, it's in many ways, I suppose, it's a phallic symbol. Um, the Stratocaster just isn't enough, really. I need something that more represents, you know, my dimensions. You wonder why we're bagging trousers? I've got no illusions of grandeur. I know where I stand. Anyway, this is a little song all about haircuts. There's not enough haircuts about these days, you know. We're putting barbers out business. So, um... This is a little song that I wrote with a friend of mine. And uh, this is all about haircuts, about a particular kind of haircut, which is guaranteed to get all the birds running after you and tearing the clothes off. That's the one I've got. <laughs> Chicago boxcar Boston Bass, it's called. The, chi the Chicago boxcar is the sort of toughy part on top, and the Boston back, actually mine isn't Boston back, but it's kind of cut square across the back. And uh, as I say, I suggest you go down to your local bar and get one tomorrow, um, Monday. And you'll have to fight the bird in the way. I do. Um, anyway, this is this is called Chicago Box Club Boston Bag, which I've already said about 900 times. And uh, if you feel like stamping along with me and joining in the general melee and making calls of yourself, that'd be great. complex rhythm of my white shoe. Bye. 
Is it true what they say about Oxford? Yeah. Yeah. Uh. yeah, right, no, I, I do this one because it's about someone that we all know and love very dearly, I think. About me. And, uh, in, in fact, it's a sort of allegorical tale that I wrote when I was kicked out of a flat in Dulwich because I complained that there was a very bad smell in the bedroom, which is true, because the sort of waste pipe for the whole house came up in the bedroom. But it's a long story, you know, and it went into a court case and everything. But eventually, I won the day, and I wrote this song because I had to go back to my mum and dad in Enfield, Middlesex. <laughs> oh, no. Nobody, nobody else knows Enfield. You know. Oh. That's terrible. Um... Anyway, you can imagine, I wrote this song, you know, when I was really down one night, and uh, but it's a happy song, really. It's called Pure Religion Calling. It's about a young man who, who leaves home because he's just totally fed up with life, and his mother keeps demanding at him because he's not doing his homework. So he decides he'll wrap up some old sandwiches and an old, snotty old handkerchief, and he slings it over his shoulder and he puts on his priest union flannel short trousers and his crumpled socks and he ventures off the past with you um, and he goes to New Orleans. <laughs> I know it's ridiculous. I know it's a long way but you've got to write songs about America because you've got to bring America because I mean New Orleans sounds much more interesting than the scum <laughs> So I, I had to set it in, in New Orleans. And uh, and he gets pulled up with all these sort of, I think they're called honky tonk women. Who only wanted for one thing, his body. This is the part I relate to most from me. And don't laugh. There's something about my body that smells of adventure, mystery, body odor. Um, anyway, he soon realises that the pleasures of the flesh aren't for him. There's, there's something deeper and more valuable to life. And so he soon gets out of it. And seven and a half years later, he drags his poor, sore-ridden body from some parlock bed. And he sets out again in his crumpled union flannel trousers. Um, and he gets pulled out with Billy Graham. And Billy Graham says, look, son. Son. I want to show you the real way, the real way is through the Lord. It is the only valuable way, the only valid way to use. Besides, we're cutting an album next week and there'll be plenty of crumpets. So I think, yeah, this is for me. So to cut a long story short, he goes back to his mum, dad and hamster, 
in Enfield Middlesex. And this is how the song goes. And I'm sorry for keeping you all. If you can all help me out in my misery. Pure religion calling. So you really are lovely, thank you very much. But I ran out of numbers half an hour ago. Uh, oh, oh dear. Um, uh, oh yeah. um, any requests? Bender. Hmm? Who what? Bender? It's not a wimpy guy, you know. This is a serious music concert. Bender? Yeah. Oh right, okay.
Think about it. As you sit all alone in your gramophone. <laughs> I may not vote conservative I may not be very wise I may not wash every day I may not be very nice But please don't think it gets me down it doesn't bother me a thing Cause when there's no one else around 
I open my mouth and sing and I sing and I sing and I sing and I sing Oh what joy Oh what joy Oh what joy I do breathe. Well, I went along to ten television to audition for opportunity knock. When Hugh Green heard me sing, he said, "Come up and test up." Well, the top right at ten television, they all did agree. I should have my own TV show each night on the BBC Because I sing And I sing And I sing And I sing Oh what joy Oh what joy I do breathe Well, Frankie Vaughn taught me how to sing He said to try and test it for you little dick He said I'd go a little better if I had a little kick but singing alone was not enough to really become a star. So I owned Bert Wheaton, and he taught me to play guitar. And I played, and I played. And I play, and I play, oh what talent, oh what talent, oh what talent, look my God they say, oh Cliff Richard produced my first record, and the shadows the backing game and soon I had a number one hit in the Lebanese hit parade and so it was that overnight I became a household name the housewife at the kitchen Thing would say the Ken Simmons is locked up again because I sing and I sing and I sing and I sing oh what joy oh what joy I do breathe. Well, I was walking down Deptford High Street the other day and I was singing such a gay song. But when I happened to look around, I saw there was something very wrong. So I went up to a policeman. Saying, what should I do? I said, officer, there's a man following me, and he said, oh, lucky you. But still, I, I, I sing, and I sing, and I sing, and I sing. Oh, what joy, oh, what joy, oh, 
what joy I do and I sing and I sing and I sing and I sing oh what joy oh what joy oh what joy ah 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 I do